Uh, here is my SQL server screen. You guys are seeing now. Uh, <clears throat> how is this session going for you? This is a small session that we do every day. Is it informative? Anything that you learn here? <clears throat> Better than developing the knowledge on this. So, okay, let's start some things here. Uh, <clears throat> Let me just do this. Open up the QMT database. Customer table is there. Last time I showed you that we can, a couple of classes ago, I showed you how we can have the data um, from the table connected with ODBC, and then we can show the data in Microsoft Excel. That was the ODBC way or <clears throat> to show the data. But you might be asking that what's the advantage of it? We can just copy this data from here Paste it in an Excel. And there we go. We have the data here as well. Uh, <clears throat> ODBC is the open database connectivity, which is different than copying and pasting the data. This data obviously does not have any link. Here, each day, I showed you that in ODBC, you will be going and just click the refresh button and you will have the most up-to-date data. Here, you have to run the query in SQL Server, copy the result and paste it here. Right? So that's a different story. Let's do this. So I this time, I have copied and pasted the data. This is no data that is coming from ODBC. This is just a copy and paste of a, or a dump of it. Let's change a few of them. And the, I have lost, I think the rep ID is 05, but as it is now being shown as 5, 10, 15, so I have lost some, some part of the data in that sense. Uh, credit limit, if I look at 500.00, it is now showing up as 500. So I lost some part of the data, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it, but in, in database terms, zero five and five are two different things. So if I have to write the query where the sales rep ID is zero five, or when I'll say where the sales rep ID is five, they are two different things. This makes a little bit of difference, but other than that, you have to make sure that you are putting an OR clause in that if you are doing 0, 5 and 5. So I'm going to save this sheet. Just, just say if I'll save this sheet on my documents, that's fine. And I'll just say customer and I'll save that. So yeah, I have a customer table here, but I have another sheet called customer, which I have it. So I'm going to close this sheet now. And let's say if I want to bring that sheet into my database. So let's say if I don't have any data in this sheet, in this table, or if I have any data, I want to bring in the data in another sheet. Can I bring that? Yes, I can certainly bring that in, but let's have a look at how I can bring that. So let's say if I go, I'll type import, and I'm sure you guys have it on your SQL server. If you go SQL server 2019 import export data, it gives me two options, 32-bit and 64-bit. 
I don't know the difference, but let's say with start with 32 bit because 32 bit is more compatible <clears throat> with any of them. So let's just start with import and export wizard. This opened up this wizard for me, showing that welcome to SQL Server import and export wizard. This can bring the data into SQL Server and out of SQL Server as well, but using this wizard. This wizard will help me bring in the data. I cannot just go in here and right click and create table. Let's say if I want to create a new table, or I cannot go underneath it and go copy and paste the data from Excel. There's nothing like that in here. So I need to bring in using this wizard. So I can say next. And then it says, where do you, where is your data sources? Where is your data source? Data is reside, residing. So I'll say, okay, my data is residing under this Excel sheet. Okay, it says, where is that Excel sheet is? Browse that sheet, please. So it is under my documents customer. It says, okay, I found your sheet. And it says that is, is, is the is the first row in your sheet is the column names yes it is if i if i if i am in doubt i can check uncheck it but if i'm sure yes it is that's fine so it is giving me some error so it is showing me an error saying that i'm not able to read this file while because i think the most it can go up is to version 2007 to version 2010. What is the version of my Excel? I think it's, it's Office 365, which is more than Office 2016 or 19. So it is not able to read my Excel file, right? So let's fix that first. Let's open up the Excel file again. And then file, save as, browse. And you know what? I'm going to do it either Excel 97 to 2003 or whatever I can do. I'm just looking at the most, uh, I, I'm looking at the most compatible version that it can encounter. So let's save it as XLX file, which was back in 97, 97 and 2003, just to make my life easier. So now I can save it as an XLS file. So now it is saved as Excel file, XLS file. Let's see if I can bring it that way. Browse. And this time I'm going to look for Excel file, XLS file instead of this file which was in later version because I can see this is the later version that is most latest version so it is not giving it a version number but I'll open up this file let's see if it is able to read this file so right now it is reading it I'm going to close this file so let's see if I can be able to proceed I am able to proceed where I want to bring in this data I want to bring in this, this data into my SQL server. So let's look at this. It's saying that what is the destination? I'm able to read that file, but what is the destination? So I need to change the destination. Uh, I'm looking for the most suitable destination. Let's do this. Microsoft OLEDB -E provider for SQL server. I can. I think I can choose this one, this one, or this one. Doesn't really matter. But let's say if I will bring in this one. So it says that it requires the server name. So I can go here and select my server name. It takes a little moment. What is my server name? And if I'm not sure what is my server name, I can go and click on Object Explorer. 
and here is my server name so i can copy this go here it's still looking for the server name but if it doesn't find the server name once it comes back i will enter the server name manually so i'll say this is the server name don't worry I, i'm providing you the server name it says what is the database that you want to bring in as soon as you bring put in the server name it fills up this drop down menu with all the databases don't touch master don't touch model don't touch msdb don't touch tempdb you can touch kimte this is my personal and this is stable so let's say kimte <coughs> copy the data from one or more tables or a view so how do you want where do you want to select your data which you it might be possibility that you might have more than more than one tabs in excel file is it right we can create more tabs in excel so i'll say i will choose it but let me proceed i can write query as well if i'm if i'm good with writing queries i can do both ways i can show you both ways but let's start with the first one copy the data from one or more table it says that i find that your data is available in the sheet one is it in the sheet one let's make sure <coughs> yeah <laughs> can you tell me why this error is coming right now because it is currently been this file is currently been held up by this process which process this process is currently capturing this excel file so i am not able to open this file but to be honest if i see this this is actually the replica of the customer and you can see at the bottom of your screen sheet 1 is the name of the table sheet 1 is the is where my data is so it is saying that i will call this table as sheet 1 if you want to change the name you can change the name if you want to change the name yes you can and i will call it this time what i will call it you know because i have already have customer so i'll just call it customer one just to be a little different than because i already have this customer table and i don't want to mingle or overwrite or do anything like that i can do that i can also do some <clears throat> i don't want this ugly name of sheet one i want to bring it in a proper naming convention called customer one but let's look at some mapping so based on the data that you have provided in the excel sheet it has identified automatically identified smartly identified some of the columns okay when you created this you created this as a character as a as a, as a character column with the primary key this is varkar but it is identifying it is as n varkar that's fine it is finding the postal code as a float instead of character it is finding the balance so it is doing within the best of its ability to identify the column names not accurate as we would like to have but it is trying to accommodate as much as possible can we change it yes at this point we can change it and we know that the customer id cannot be null but it is thinking that it can be null so i can change it so i can change as much as i want but if i don't want to change that will be okay but problem is the data is coming up is a little bit different than our schema is what our schema is let's look at that our schema for the customer table if i expand it and look at the columns 
our schema shows that customer id is the primary key and it's a table it is character 3 three characters first name is varkar with the 60 characters last name is a varkar with 60 characters address is the varkar with 60 characters and so on and so forth postal code is five characters but as i said it is trying to interpret with the best of its ability by reading from the excel sheet so i will leave it at that i will not bother it but here is the problem when i will bring it as a float float is a totally different data type than the character data type but let's what it is trying to do actually trying to read the excel file let's look at this excel file one more time it is trying to read the excel file and think of it that this is the best i can think of that this is the float this is the best i can think of that this could be a more than a 60 character so i am accommodating it to 255 just to be safe and then so on and so forth balance should be float credit could be float this could be a decimal point number at any time customer id could be a decimal point number at any time so it is trying to be interpreting it to the best of its ability anyways that is my that let's leave it at that and in the edit mapping you can see the sql as well you can edit the sql as well it is an auto generated sql for it it is automatically behind the scenes will run this SQL before it brings the data from that table. So it has to do two things. It has to first create the structure of which table, customer one table, and give and create these fields for it. And once it's created the field, then it will be able to bring in the data from that Excel sheet. So first it will create, second it will append the data to that table. So let it do what it is thinking it's doing and click OK. And if I can see preview. So in the preview, you, it is showing me that this is the preview that I can show you that this is how the data will come in. Looks good. Click OK. Next. And this is a <clears throat> totally different chapter, SSIS, but I'm going to leave it at here. And I'll say, OK, I'm good with it. This is the summary. And please bring it in. So if, as soon as I'll print finish or uh, click finish, all the 12 rows are transferred with successful. No errors, no warnings. All the 12 rows are now inside my table. Okay. To be sure, right click refresh here you go there's a table called customer one can we see all the data in the customer one table right click there you go data is here <coughs> so i have lost the precision of wrap id if i'm bringing in the data in here so let's see if i can append the data underneath the customer table okay first of all let's look at this table is there any primary key here now let's look at that No primary key. There is no primary key. I see. There is a primary on primary, but I don't think so. There is a primary key at all. There is no primary key. So it has brought in the table to the best of availability. It does not care about your primary key. It does not care about your foreign key. It just bring in the data for it. Is it good enough? Probably not. So when you are database administrator, and this can happen that you probably been asked or given the project that 
all of our employees are maintaining the customers in the Excel sheet. Your task is to bring in the data from those Excel sheet into our database, which already has a customer table. Things look a little bit more complicated now. Your Excel sheet has all the data. Your project is to bring the data from your Excel sheets from your legacy, legacy database, which is your Excel sheet or your Microsoft Access database. And your task is to bring in the data as close as possible to your customer table. And this is just one table that I'm talking about. There could be hundreds and thousands of data coming from different sources that you need to massage and make it according to your requirement to bring it into the database. Do you agree? So you have a task on your hand. So first thing first, your data as much identical, your, your schema should be as identical <clears throat> as your actual schema. Your actual schema is under customer table, which is this. The schema that you got is this. Totally different. Totally diff two different beasts. So you have the data all available, but there's a compatibility issues between the data types. So how you can fix these problems, these issues? And you will have thousands of rows. You will not have 10 or 12 rows. You will have thousands of rows and you want to accommodate as much column, as much data as you can. With the minimum data loss, you want to bring in the maximum rows. All those, let's say you have 1200 rows, you bring in the data, 200, uh, 1000 rows went in smoothly. 200 rows give you an error. You might have, you might have to hire an interny that will be sitting all day entering those missing 200 rows. Your target is to bring in as much as possible. So these are the real life business challenges that you will face. You will not be facing a very easy task, create table, create table, select query. No, some changes, some, some tasks for database administrators are complicated as this. You will be saying, oh no, now I have a task to do. I need to bring in the I need to bring in the data properly. So what you will do, you will have to fix the data in the source. And then what is your source in this case? Your Excel sheet became became the source because you are bringing in the data in the customer one table. I haven't even mingled customer one with customer with customer table. I'm just sitting with two tables of the customer. <clears throat> so do you understand the problem? <clears throat> yes, I can. I can bring in the pro I can bring in the data, but problem is now. Customer is okay. First name is okay. Address is okay. This is okay. All these tables are okay. Mostly are okay, but Rep ID is screwed up. So how can I <clears throat> add a zero in front of customer ID or oh, sorry, rep ID and then append it to my customer table. So let's say if I go here, I'm going to change customer table and edit some rows for, for example, I'm going, let's see if I'm able to edit it, but if it's not, then it's a problem. 26, 183, just changing one or, one or two records. 228, 
Let's say I'm not going to add it too much and I'm going to delete the rest of these seven rows. Now, my next thing is I need to change the rep ID. So I can go here and change the rep ID to 05. Let's see if it let me do that. No, it's not letting me do that. Right? It's not letting me do that. So my challenge is to fix this data. How much data I need to change? These are just five rows, guys. If it were be thousands of rows, will I be sitting as a database administrator making those changes? No. I will need to be writing or bringing, I need to fix the source to bring in the data properly as much as I can. So I will be playing with the data and changing the data information at the source. But my main purpose was to show you, yes, you can bring in the data from Excel sheet. And you can throw out the data from Excel sheet as well. Let's do that as well. Some things you will learn at job and I'm leaving some questions and answered for you. <clears throat> and an unanswered question is that how much mapping that you can do as much as you can so that you will have the most appropriate data. Why I'm not able to delete. I'm going to documents. Let's export out the data from the customer table. <clears throat> export the data out. Click on this same thing. Let's try 64 bit at the moment. We have that, so why not? Import, export, 64 bit. You want to select the data source. Data is coming out of SQL Server. So you'll select. Let's try uh, SQL Server native client. I think all should work. All SQL servers should work, but let's try this one. What is the name of my server? Connect. I don't want it to keep looking and wait for one minute. I'm just going to give it. And I can type local as well. That's fine. Because it's a local server. It could be a remote server as well, you need to give the remote path. Database name, Kimte, table that I'm going to export out. It is saying that destination, how you want to do a export out. So I said, okay, export the data in an Excel sheet. Where is that sheet located? Right now it is not located. So let's just create one. is asking me to create a file. So first go ahead and create a file. Should have let me create that, but new Microsoft Excel sheet should not be an XLX file. I think it should be Excel file. Just to be sure, save as, browse, and I want to save it as an Excel file so it accommodates that. Test.excel. Let's see that if it is able to do that. So now if I'll go and close it out. Okay, import export wizard. Your file that you are complaining is now ready. I want this to be out in there. So my Customer data will be now exported out to Excel file. It is not able to register a library for that old. So let's see. Browse. It is asking me to give a file name. So let's see if it is happy with this one. 
yeah it was happy with this one so <laughs> it is able to export out into this excel file which is new excel document but it was not able to export out to so you have to do a little bit of hit and miss here but it did work out that it is exporting out into excel 2010 and 2007 and 10 which is latest and greatest that it can read other than that yeah i okay yeah i can export out excel 2016 as well well leave it at that because all the xlxs uh, xlxx file are started after office 2007 so it doesn't really matter if it is 2007 or 2010 but there is a slight difference at the library level at microsoft so we don't need to worry about Copy data from one table or a view. Which table I want to pick up from the customer table, and it will create a customer tab in that Excel file. Mapping I can check, but really at this point, it is going out to be. Look at this. You find the difference over there? It was converting when I am bringing the data from the Excel file by copying and pasting it. It was reading it as a varchar. Because I copied and pasted, I lost. Then, whenever I do copy and pasting, keep in mind, I lose information. But when I do import, export, I don't lose the information. So it is able to read as much as it can. And it is giving it as a long text and best of its, best of its ability. But this is not the ideal world scenario that you're looking at this import export wizard is just a wizard wizards are good but they are not the replacement of your handwritten code you understand now so most of the time <clears throat> your code will take you closer to what you want so it is saying that okay i am able to read this error on global so what's the error so customer table okay edit mapping that's fine it is reading something run immediately let's see what happens 12 rows are exported out to which excel sheet this new excel sheet that i created this is the garbage i think but let's say if i open up this one nothing Oh, here it is. Now look at this. It is able to maintain the integrity of your data. 0, 05 is there. And what's this exclamation? I have to look at it, but it is keeping most of your data intact. So copying and pasting, avoid as much as possible. Use import export wizard. Even, even after that, when you use import export, it you are not able to go close to your data okay all right so that answers the questions do you have any questions here i i'm sure i have created a lot of questions in your mind at the moment but yes this wizard helps you do that i'm not the fan of and the, the, this is the database administrator challenges that you can face as a database administrator, that you are not only just writing the queries, you are having the data from different companies, different sources, mingling them, putting them all together at one place. And it will be coming from some customer will call it customer table. Some customers will call it customer one table. Your table name is customer table. All you need to do is bring in all the information from different sources and give you the information at the end. So that would be the challenging part. So that that requires a lot of re rework and hit and miss and how you will do with the best of your knowledge. And there are packages that you can use called SSIS packages, which help you import and export the data. So that's a different topic or the subject to study in the SQL Server to bring in data from sources. All you are doing at this level, you are doing mostly SQL, writing queries, which is good. But when you expand on on the career two or three down the, two or three years down the road, you will not just be only writing queries, but you will be granting permissions to the users 
you will be revoking permissions from the users who left the company you will be uh, giving some people the read permission some people the insert permission some people the alter table permissions all that